Greetings again everyone, and it seems like Sony's designers have had an interesting idea to take a bright aperture ultra wide angle zoom lens, cut it down to size a bit and make it more portable and a little less expensive. Here is the Sony FE 16-25mm f2.8 G. Good idea? Maybe. The lens's widest angle of 16mm is still brilliantly ultra wide on a full frame camera. Very, very useful for all kinds of exciting landscape, cityscape and architecture photography. And in this age of high resolution cameras, if this lens is sharp enough, then at least you'll be able to crop into your final image to get a bit closer to your subject if the telephoto end of 25mm isn't quite as close as you want to get. One issue is the lens's rather hefty price of £1,250, which is certainly high for a lens with a shortened zoom range, but its compact size and suitability for video work might still make it worth it for a number of professionals. It's a full frame camera lens just for Sony's mirrorless E mount cameras, and I'd like to thank Sony very much for loaning me this lens for a week for testing, although, as usual, this is a totally independent review. Here is that zoom range in action. Handy! Although other ultra wide angle zooms can obviously get a bit of a tighter image than this at the telephoto end, and a maximum aperture of f2.8 is enough for shooting in darker situations. The lens's build quality is typically nice for a Sony G lens here. It's made of high quality plastics with weather sealing around the metallic mount. Compared to, say, a 16-35mm f2.8 lens, it's considerably smaller and lighter. The aperture ring can be set to click or to turn smoothly, which is satisfying for both stills and video shooters. It can't be locked in or out of automatic mode, but the click needed to get it into A mode is at least quite forceful. Then comes the rubberized zoom ring, which turns very smoothly, no stickiness at all here, which is again useful for video work. Unusually, the front of the lens extends when zoomed out, not when zoomed in, but it doesn't extend far. Then comes the rubberized focus ring, which also turns very smoothly. As you can see here, the lens's manual focus response is very snappy. Whether you're zoomed in or zoomed out, the lens only displays a small amount of focus breathing, although the latest Sony cameras can completely correct even this for you nowadays. As expected from a Sony lens, the autofocus is brilliantly fast, silent and accurate. Whether you're shooting in single shot mode or continuous autofocus mode, absolutely no problems here. The lens comes with a little plastic hood, its filter thread size is 67mm and it does not feature image stabilisation. Then again, it's not really necessary, as Sony's cameras almost all have it built in these days and it's not so important at such wide angles. Overall, it's typical high build quality here for a Sony G lens, everything is present and correct and working perfectly well. So, let's see about image quality. Its zoom range is really only intended for full frame users, it won't be all that useful on APS-C, so I'm just testing it on a full frame camera today, my A7R 3 with its 42 megapixel sensor. In-camera corrections are turned on. At 16mm and f2.8, we right away see spectacular sharpness and contrast in the middle of the image. Corner image quality is looking a touch softer right in the edges, with slightly lower contrast and a fair bit of darkness from vignetting, but actually this is still very good resolution. At f4, there's a touch more brightness, but for the best possible corners you have to stop down to f8, where sharpness is very good, but it's still possible to get a little better than that. Let's zoom into 25mm now. At f2.8, again, image quality is absolutely perfect in the middle. In the corners, it's the same situation as at f16. The image is almost as good as the middle, but a little dark. Stop down to f4 for a little more brightness in those corners, but at f5.6, we see a nice bump in image quality, and those corners are now almost as sharp as the middle. At f8, the image quality is now perfect from corner to corner. Overall, the lens is putting in a very nice little performance here. The corner image quality could have been just a touch sharper at 16mm admittedly, but everything else is looking excellent to me. Ok, let's turn off in-camera corrections and take a look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. Normally, your camera will correct this for you, but as you can see, at 16mm, the lens suffers from massive barrel distortion and very dark corners at f2.8. Stop down to f4, f5.6 and f8 to see those corners brighten up. 
Even if you zoom in to 25mm, some barrel distortion still remains, and the corners are still very dark at f2.8, although they brighten at f4 and f5.6. So it's a poor performance here, make sure your images are corrected one way or the other. Let's see about close-up image quality now, and if you zoom in, this lens can get you nice and close to any smaller subject. At f2.8, close-up image quality is sharp, but with very low contrast. At f4, the image is far better, and at f5.6, very sharp. Ok, let's see how the lens performs against bright light now, and it's a good performance. Flaring patterns can be seen here, but they are very transparent. While we're working in the dark, let's see about coma levels and sun stars. At 16mm and f2.8, there's no real coma smearing to be seen here in image corners, everything's looking great really. Let's zoom out again and look for sun stars. If you look in the bottom right corner, it's only really at f8 that anything begins to emerge, and even then, those sun stars are only gentle. Let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh, although it's rather a moot point on such a wide angle optic. Outer focus backgrounds look lovely and soft here, I couldn't notice any real issues at all. And finally, related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f2.8 it's pretty strong on this lens unfortunately, it's much better at f4 though, and at f5.6 it's gone, but again, it's not an important thing to think about on such a wide angle optic. Overall, I liked the Sony FE 16-25mm f2.8 G lens very much. The zoom range is a bit limited, but the main thing is that you're getting as wide as 16mm, with a decently bright aperture in a well-made, compact lens with sharp image quality. The price might be high, but the lens really is quite lovely and useful and handy, so it still comes recommended. Thanks for watching everyone, and a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Check out my Patreon page in the description below, where supporters get all kinds of exclusive bonus content just for them that I really enjoy putting together. Happy shooting, and ciao for now. Es schmolz der Schnee vom letzten Jahr, der Frühling ging als Sommer war, doch unser Glück bleibt immer da, die Liebe, Liebe, Liebe ist wunderbar. Da strahlen heute Nacht die Sterne so hell, die Luft ist so mild, mein Herz schlägt so schnell, ich sag dir, weil du so nah bei mir bist. Die Welt so schön wie noch nie.